Earlier this year, I started getting emails about this book, The Plant Paradox, purporting to expose the hidden dangers in healthy foods that cause disease and weight gain, foods like beans and whole grains and tomatoes. Why? Because of lectins, which is a rehashing of the discredited blood-type diet from decades ago. They just keep coming back. Uh, yeah, but this was written by an MD, which, if you've seen my medical school videos, you'll know is effectively an anti-credential when it comes to writing diet books, basically advertising to the world that you've received likely little or no formal training in nutrition. Dr. Atkins was, after all, a cardiologist. But look, you want to give the benefit of the doubt, the problem is that it doesn't even seem to pass the sniff test. I mean, if lectins are bad, then beans would be the worst, and so bean counters would presumably find that bean eaters cut their lives short, whereas the exact opposite may be true. With legumes, uh, beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils found to be perhaps the most important dietary predictor of survival in older people in countries around the world. As Dan Buettner points out in his Blue Zones work, lectin-packed foods are the cornerstone of the diets of all the healthiest, longest-lived populations on the planet. Plant-based diets in general, and legumes in particular, are a common thread among longevity Blue Zones around the world, uh, the most lectin-lush food there is. And if lectins are bad, then whole grain consumers should be riddled with disease, when in fact whole grain intake is associated with a reduced risk of coronary heart disease, the number one killer of men and women, strokes too, and total cancer, and mortality from all causes put together, meaning people who eat whole grains tend to live longer and get fewer respiratory diseases, infectious diseases, diabetes, and all non-cardiovascular non-cancer causes to boot. And not just in population studies. As I've shown, you can randomize people into whole grain interventions and prove cause and effect benefits. The same with tomatoes. You randomize women to a cup and a half of tomato juice or water every day, and all that nightshade tomato lectin reduces systemic inflammation, or has waist slimming effects, reducing cholesterol as well as inflammatory mediators. So when people told me about this book, I was like, let me guess, he sells a line of lectin-blocking supplements. And what do you know? Assist your body in the fight against lectins for only $79.95 a month. It's only like a thousand bucks a year, a bargain for pleasant bathroom visits. And then, of course, there's 10 other supplements, so for only eight or nine thousand dollars a year, you can lick those lectins. Oh, did I not mention his skincare line? Firm and Sculpt for an extra 120. All so much more affordable when you subscribe to his VIP club. But you still want to give him the benefit of the doubt. People ask me all the time to comment on some new blog or book or YouTube video, and I have to sadly be like, look, there are 100,000 peer-reviewed scientific papers on nutrition published in the medical literature every year, and we can barely keep up with those. Uh, but people kept emailing me about this book, so I was like, fine, I'll check out the first citation. Chapter 1, Citation 1, Forget Everything You Thought You Knew Was True. Diet books love saying that. For example, eating shellfish and egg yolks dramatically reduces total cholesterol. What? Egg yolks reduce cholesterol? <laughs> what is this citation? This is the paper he cites, and here it is. By now, you know how these studies go. How do you show a food decreases cholesterol? You remove so much meat, cheese, and eggs that overall your saturated fat falls. In this case, about 50%. If you cut saturated fat in half, of course cholesterol levels are going to drop. So they got a drop in cholesterol removing meat, cheese, and egg yolks. Yet that's the paper he uses to support his statement that egg yolks dramatically reduce cholesterol. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, th that's the opposite of the truth. Add egg yolks to people's diets, and their cholesterol goes up. I mean, how dare he say this? Uh, and it's not like some you know, harmless foolishness like saying the earth is flat or something. Heart disease is the number one killer of men and women. This could actually hurt people. So much for my benefit of the doubt.